All right, so Deborah Shell says, what was the most unexpected part of your first week? Anything that was different than you imagined? I mean, the most unexpected part of my first week was What's up, you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So excited that you guys were able to join me today. And you have been with me now for my first week of being an official general surgery trauma PA. Um, and you left me a lot of questions because I asked you to. So thank you for that. So that is what I'm going to be doing right now is answering you guys' questions that you all left me in my comment section throughout the week. There are specific uh questions that I've seen, um, some about like my job and the onboarding process and, you know, just like the whole, how long it took me to get a job. Did I take the first job that I got that are, they need a little bit more love and tender and care, right? So, um, I will be doing dedicated videos to those specific questions. So if you're interested in the answer to those questions, go ahead right now, pause the video, subscribe to my channel, and then you can come back and start the video um, because then you'll know exactly when I do those, those particular questions and the, the answers to those questions, okay? So get those that little housekeeping out of the way. So I'm gonna start off with this first question uh, you know, that someone wrote to me. It said, hello, Adana, do you still do consultations? I won't be applying until next cycle, so no rush, but congratulations, PAC. So yes, of course, I will be doing um, consultation sessions um, right now as I am still getting into my whole job flow and understanding exactly like what my responsibilities are and exactly like what I am expected to do. Uh, I have paused on consultation sessions because I want to dedicate my time to that. Um, and I really do put a lot into these consultation sessions for you all. So um, that's why I've paused it for like this month or so, but likely I will be opening them back up um, at the end of May, you know, beginning of June, still well in time for those of you that are trying to apply to CASPA. Um, um, uh, through CASPA and to your various different um, schools. So, you know, stay tuned. I will be opening them up and I will be making like a video or, or a, a, you know, a statement or something like that, a post on Instagram, letting you know exactly when that is happening. Okay. So Lisa says, is your, uh, SP, which I'm guessing is supervising physician, um, or whoever is with you looking over your notes, like in PA school, at least to begin with, um, notes make me nervous that I'm missing something, but I also don't want to take an hour for each note because there's no time for that. I'm going to be so nervous when I start working, hopefully in October or November. Well, congratulations on almost like finishing PA school and going to start working in October, November, you know, we'll send blessings up and, and hope and pray for that one. Um, as far as my supervising physician, are they looking over my notes? Uh, technically. Okay. So, um, they like, there's no one like standing over me per se, like while I'm writing a note. So obviously in the beginning, like the first two days, um, that I wrote a trauma note. And then, um, you know, I think like the third or fourth day when I wrote, uh, an actual general surgery progress note, um, I had, you know, people look at it because obviously like, I, I don't know what is expected. Right. And so, in our EMR system, there's a way to kind of copy someone's previous note and ha have it as like one of your pre-completed notes. And then that way, all you have to do is fill in the general information. So that information being like the history of the present illness, and then also like their social history, you know, family history, past medical history, their medications, those type of thing that is more specific to your patient. So you'll have the format basically, um, and then you just kind of fill in the, the spaces. So I was able to do that, but again, going from trauma, <clears throat> sorry, but going from trauma to general surgery doesn't necessarily like meld per se, because the note has to look different, a little bit different. Um, in trauma, they are expecting us to do it in a kind of like system based. So, you know, you're doing like neuro, um, and all of these various different system, musculoskeletal and things like that. Um, on the general surgery, like progress note per se, it's not necessarily like that. So just understanding like the differences between the notes is important. So 
I said kind of that they're looking over it because I had them look over it in like my initial two slash three notes, the various different notes that I had to do. Um, and I haven't done all of the notes that we're expected to do yet. And so obviously when I do those notes, I'll have them look at that as well, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, and then once I have done like some of those notes, you know, throughout the rest of the week when I was doing the same notes over and over again, I just have as a PA, you have to have the, an endorser, um, or a co-signer. And so I just send my notes for the supervising physician, the attending on, you know, duty that day to co-sign it, um, or attest to it. And then they'll literally say, I agree with the PA's plan. Uh, I've read it and I agree with it. And if they don't necessarily agree with it, there's an option for them to make an addendum at the bottom and they will add whatever it is that, you know, anything extra that they may need. So that is typically how it's going right now. So JC Bonner says, this is kind of early, but would you be interested in being a preceptor to new PA students when you get more experience? And absolutely. I mean, that's this is what I love to do, right? I mean, I like talking to you guys. I like sharing my experiences with you all. And my particular hospital is a teaching hospital. So I am guessing that uh, likely we will have students. I mean, I rotated there. Uh, there were a ton of med students and PA students rotating through. And so... Yeah, I would love to be a preceptor. Um, obviously, right now, like there is no students rotating through the hospital, um, which is fine by me because I'm still learning. And I think you really have to be um, a PA for a year before they start allowing you to have students rotate with you. So that is what um, I think I, I'll obviously like be a year in before I actually start stu have students starting to rotate with me. But I am absolutely interested in having students um, and precepting students. So stay tuned for that if you guys are interested in being one of my like preceptees. <laughs> All right, so Denise Maldonado says, how often do you find that PAs can cross train? I knew they could move from specialty to specialty, but didn't know cross training was a thing. For what other specialties can cross training be done and is it mostly in the hospital? So uh, technically, yes, right? Um, so technically it's mostly in the hospital and technically not. Like, so obviously like these people still work in the hospital, but they cross train, I guess you can say in other specialties outside of the hospital. So I know PAs that um, are in emergency medicine and primary care. I know PAs that are in emergency medicine and urgent care. And that's because there is kind of a little bit of overlap. Like obviously when something comes into the urgent care and it cannot be handled in the urgent care, they send it to the the ED. And so that's kind of an easy transition for people. Um, but when it comes to like the hospital itself, I know a lot of PAs that are cross trained in various different specialties in my particular hospital. There is an OBGYN PA that I know that is also an ICU. Um, there are PAs that are neurosurgery and trauma or neurosurgery, trauma and ortho um, or vascular and gen surge. Um, so, you know, there it's in areas that they kind Kind of like have overlap and there is you know a little bit of give where you guys are kind of doing the same thing um, and so obviously it is all based on your hospital and their policy and what they're willing to allow you to do or see or and cross train in but in my particular hospital um, you can absolutely cross train uh, very easily uh, and again it's it's obviously all through like the the surgical subspecialties I guess you can say so it's a thing. All right, so AMI says, so, so happy for you, Donna. My question is, do you get to choose the days you work slash will, or will you be able to do that in the future? So I don't know if um, I will be able to do that in the future per se. I mean, uh, so they send out the schedule um, or the month for PTO time, uh, kind of like a month early. So we have that calendar for June if we want to take PTO time which I mean, technically I wouldn't be able to do PTO time until the end of June because I can't do it for 90 days, which I don't even want to do it because I'm only working two days a week, right? So I'm having lots of PTO time, I guess you can say. Um, and I don't have to pay for it, uh, like, you know, spend my own PTO time money. So um, I, I don't know if that will be something, but no, right now, no, I'm not 
I'm not choosing what days I work. Uh, there are four of us currently on the service line that will, well, in the, uh, in the general surgery aspect service line, like trauma is fully staffed with like five PAs and so, um, or six. And then there are people that have cross trained and, you know, kind of fill in the gaps if there are any spaces, but they just kind of put you where they need you. Um, and then if, you know, for whatever reason, there is a conflict, like, you know, unforeseen thing happen and you need that time off or you need to be able to switch with somebody, there is the option to do that. So you can just be like, Hey, you know, this thing happened. Could you switch with me? I'll work your Thursday shift. If you work my Monday shift. And if they say yes, great. And then you can just go ahead and write like write in an email and include the person that's making the schedule just so that they know if like for whatever reason somebody doesn't show up, they know who to blame, right? So that is essentially kind of like how it works, but it's very simple and easy like to kind of navigate those like days and what days you want to work or can work. All right, so Jasmine McRoberts says, congratulations, by the way, why did you choose trauma? Also, how did you like ENT, your ENT clinical rotation? So I did not do an ENT clinical rotation. Um, that's, that's not, I mean, I talked about like an ENT PA that came to speak at my school, but I didn't do an ENT rotation. So um, if that's what you meant, I didn't do that. So I, I didn't like it. <laughs> But as far as uh, congratulations and why I chose trauma, I chose trauma because, you know, trauma kind of chose me, I guess you can say. So, like, I interviewed at a lot of different specialties. I had, you know, the specialties that I was mostly interested in, obviously. And then I had those specialties that I knew, like, I was not interested in at all. And so, like, from those spectrums, there is a lot of gray area. Um, and especially, I think, like, as a new grad, it's great to keep your options open and just, like, know what you don't like and what you like. Because then, you know, at the end of the day, you can be happy in wherever you land, even if it's not exactly what you wanted for your your first job. And so for me, that's kind of where, um, I was at, you know, I interviewed, uh, once I got into like the hospital and I was able to talk to some of the PAs and look at how, you know, they operate and what's expected. And, uh, again, those 24 hour shifts were calling my name. Um, I was really happy about that. And so I, I chose trauma, um, and I chose that hospital because I was familiar with it and familiar with the people. So and that's why I chose trauma. All right, so Leah Marie says, hi, Adana, how much time will you actually spend in surgery as a trauma slash gen surge PA? 40%, 30%, or 20%, less or more, LOL. So um, I don't really know. Uh, our, our, our hospital is a teaching hospital, so there are residents that kind of take precedent because they have to learn, you know, those different types of surgeries. So um, I'm not really sure how to answer that or if I can answer it right now. This is only my first week um, and I haven't had any surgery time really. Like I, all of my suturing and things like that have been in the trauma bay um, and the residents have been the ones like in the surgery. Uh, and again, with the coronavirus and our current like climate, no one's really doing any elective surgeries. There are not a lot of people out, so there are not a lot of trauma, as many traumas as would, we would see at this time of year coming in. So, um, in the night, the residents typically aren't there, but, um, you know, currently again, there's not that many traumas with general surgery stuff to see. So I haven't had to go in. Um, but obviously as I start to work 24s, um, and you know, as more traumas come in and general surgery stuff comes in in the nighttime, I will have to do surgeries if there's no residents there to take it. So, um, I don't know. I can pick an ambiguous percentage on it of like, 15, 20%. I, I could, but I cannot answer that truthfully right now. So, um, just stay tuned, you know, subscribe to the channel because as I get more experience and I, as I get more experience with this particular, um, situation, then I'll be better able to answer that one for you. Okay. All right. So Deborah Shell says, what was the most unexpected part of your first week? Anything that was different than you imagined? I mean, the most unexpected part of my first week was like being thrown to the lines, okay? Like literally like first day, you're in there, you're running drama, you're writing notes. And, you know, obviously I want to learn and I want to like get the experience, but I didn't realize like it was going to literally come so quickly. So that was my most unexpected part of my first week 
just how much um, freedom I had, I guess you can say, because you're still in this mode of like, oh, like I'm a new grad. You know, I, I have not been in patient care for almost a whole year since June of last year when I did my, you know, my started my summative of PA school. So it, it's crazy. Like you're, you're officially a PA, so go do your job. And so that was, that was pretty interesting, but exciting. And I'm like, I was excited about it. Um, anything different than I imagined? Yeah. Cause I didn't imagine that that was going to happen, but I'm glad that I was able to do that because now I'm a lot less nervous and I'm getting more comfortable as each day passes with, you know, my expectations and what I'm expected to do. So that was like definitely my most unexpected part though. So like being a PA was just one of my goals. Like I have many goals in life, right? But this is one of the larger goals in life. And so I'm just like, I feel great. I'm happy that this weight is has been lifted off my shoulders, that, you know, God has blessed me um, with this opportunity to be able to like uh, help patients and help individuals and also do something that I love doing. Um, and so I feel great. I feel blessed. I feel humbled, happy, right? Um, um, as far as is it better than I thought or, you know, not so much, it is everything and so much more. Um, the um, amount of different things that we're able to do as PAs, like all of the various different uh, areas we're able to work in and, you know, the things that I'm able to see on a daily basis. Like I have given you guys some insight on stuff that I've seen in my first week of being a PA. Like imagine two weeks three weeks, a month, but you know, years down the line, like it's, it's, it's unimaginable what I will be able to experience. And I am excited about that. And so, um, everything and more, I'm happy about it. I feel blessed. Um, that is like my whole take on this whole accomplishing this PA goal. All right, you guys. So that was it. I love you guys. You guys have been amazing and awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I will talk to you guys next time.